Hi y'all woodturners, welcome back to my shop. Today we're going to talk about a really, uh, we're going to demonstrate a really simple uh, project, a fun project. Of course I say that for all these videos because to me I'm passionate about wood turning and it's all fun. But, but these are really cute. I'm going to, these are peg people and they're, they're for, for little kids. So I made these for my granddaughters. And let me give you a close up. Uh, they're, they're quick and easy to make. I got this project from, they're wood, they'll bounce. I got this project from Richard Raffin's uh, uh, book on uh, turning toys with Richard Raffin. Richard is my favorite wood turning instructor. I have five of his books. Uh, another project, that, these Peggy's came out of this, out of that book, but another project that came out of it was this pull toy for my younger uh, granddaughter, and she just loves it. And, and, but I want to show you how to do these, these peg people. Uh, like I say, they are, they are simple. You're going to start off with a piece of wood, oh, approximately six inches long, and thick enough that it will uh, it will give you the base of the size you want. We'll talk about that a little bit a little bit further. First, a safety hazard. Keep in mind that these toys are really not for toddlers. If they are, you're going to have to make them large enough where no part of the toy will go inside a um, toilet paper tube, one and three quarter inches. Otherwise, it's a choking hazard. Uh, these were made for my uh, granddaughter when the youngest was was uh, a little more than three years old, so it wasn't really an issue, even though it fit inside, because she wasn't going to try to put these in her mouth, and and, uh, and she wasn't going to put them inside of her mouth. You can use most any type of straight grain plain wood. I'd recommend some things such as maple or cherry. I would avoid anything with prominent growth rings. Uh, a, a, a bland, colorless wood is better because it's easier to decorate, paint, use markers on it. So maple is good, cherry is good. Of course, my all-time, one of my favorites, Bradford Pear. I always have a lot of it. It's very bland, uh, somewhat colorless. Might be a little uh, uh, orange, but it handles uh, felt tip pins well. And we'll talk about decorating a little bit a little bit later. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I've chucked up a little small piece of wood. Now, my preference is to normally take a piece of wood at least six inches long, uh, turn it round, put a tenon on it that'll fit your chuck, and then you can make two peggies, turning one and then another. But I'm going to dispense with that. Just I just picked up a small scrap. Uh, I said I'd rather have a plain wood without a lot of color. This has got a little bit of color in it, but we're going to make do with it. And I'm just going to show you uh, one. These are so simple, you don't have to get very fancy because a child's imagination will, will, uh, will turn them into uh, an interesting character. I'm going to use my uh, recently acquired apprentice chuck for this small piece of wood. So I'm going to size, size this tenon to three quarter of an inch uh, using this uh, old, old technique. It's not my technique, but using an old wrench that I've sharpened the top a little bit. First, let me get my safety glasses. Turn the lathe on. Get the speed up a little bit. Maybe 1400 or so. And the key to this, when using this is press up on the bottom so you'll get an accurate fit. Uh, and then let it uh, cut with the top. And don't leave too much for this to do. You're mostly sizing with this. So do the heavy uh, work with a parting tool or a skew or something to get it close. Now from experience I know that this is slightly oversized so I'm going to take my parting tool and just take it down just a smidgen more so it'll fit my collet chuck in the three quarter inch collet and I'm going to make it a little bit larger. Then when I get in the collet, when I get it in the collet chuck, I'll finish sizing it and I'll show you a trick there. Okay, here's that collet chuck I was talking about. I did a review of this a while back, so if you're interested, you might look at that review. Uh, but this is a nice system for turning smaller projects, especially if you don't have a chuck with small jaws, so that will just fit in there. And in the review, one of the things I liked about this was this knurling, so you can 
in some instances almost get it tight enough without having to uh, use the two uh, wrenches came with it but I'm not going to take any chances and I'm going to make it pretty tight now what size to make it that that's up to you I would say make them consistent make a few different sizes until you find out what works best for you and what I found out that works best for me is 35 millimeter and I've made this little template which makes it a little easier to work with just add a little bit of uh, oh three eighths uh, plywood with a hole drilled with a Forstner bit I think the 35 millimeter bit I had on hand because this is used for I think the European type of uh, cabinet hinges so I had one and and it and I use it to size the thing to make them uniform drill two holes into a, into a scrap cut it off then you can use this to size it while you're turning it and then when you finish you can do a sanity check with this to make sure it's the right right size so let's go ahead and get started I'm going to start with a spindle roughing gouge anchor bevel cut Here's where I use the gouge template. And that's just right. Let's stop and check. And it goes all the way down, so that's a good good size. And I'll show you in a little while. Uh, you know the purpose of making them the same size you're gonna make some vehicles uh, that they can go in so you want to be you want them to be interchangeable parts now I tend to do this with a 3 8 inch spindle gouge I'm gonna make something more like more like this so with a skew I'm gonna mark the head make V cuts You can make a hat if you like. y'all thinking what kind of shape is that I'm not sure I'm going to switch to a detail spindle gouge which has a narrower flute and a pointier to make it a little easier to get in there Well, this is a pretty goofy shape. I, I, I obviously shouldn't have gone in so much, so I don't like that at all. That hat looks strange, so I'm just going to make that go away. What we call a design opportunity. I don't think I mentioned it. I'd make these about two and a half inches long, and I have that marked on my my template. So that's just about to the end of this. I'm gonna 
start it off right here. And before we go any further, let's double check since I brought the size down a little bit here. Let's, and that's why we check. Have a little bit of a planing cut in my skew just to size this thing. Yeah, and and there's the there's the little guy. Uh, you can paint this a solid color, and then they've got a palette to to decorate. And decorating these things, I think my older granddaughters enjoyed as much as playing with them. And I'll show you a little picture of that shortly. And you know, we could sand this thing off. Uh, frankly, it's close enough. It probably doesn't need much sanding. I'll hit it a lick with some two two twenty. I'm going to switch to my fluted Sorby uh, thin thin parting tool, two millimeter, because it makes a nice clean cut on the bottom, and I won't have to worry about doing much with it. So start that, ease it in, come back a half a thickness, give it a little more clearance room so it doesn't bind. Go back in. Okay, I picked this up off the floor. Once you uh, finish your uh, parting it off, you'll probably have a little nubbin. You can either sand that off with some sandpaper, or you can take your uh, uh, skew chisel and just easily cut it off. And and there you got it. You can decorate these things with a, with felt tip pens, uh, acrylic paint. Uh, I saw one YouTube video where somebody had purchased some of these stick people and actually used scraps of cloth for uh, for dresses for the for the ladies. Uh, I saw one where they used a glue gun and actually built up some texture for the hair that they painted. I mean you or your youngsters depending on how old they are and under what kind of supervision can decorate them any way you want. I want to show you a little clip of my granddaughter decorating and playing with these these uh, uh, stick figures or Peggy's as Richard Raffin calls them and and show you a, a close-up of a couple of the vehicles I made with holes drilled in them so they can show up in one vehicle and leave in another another vehicle and and have a lot of lot of fun. Artist at work. I hope this was useful for you. Until next time, bye.